So for number 19, we do have to uh, draw these curves and then find the area between them. So let's begin with our cosine of pi x. Now when we have um, a trig function in the form y is equal to cosine of bx, um, our period, so the time that it takes to complete a full oscillation, is 2 pi over b. Now our b over here is pi, right? So if y is equal to cosine of pi x, um, our period is, is equal to 2 pi over pi, which is equal to 2. So this means that it takes um, 2 units of time to complete one oscillation. So let us draw this. Um, and so we do have, uh, that is 1, 2, minus 1, 2, and 1, and minus 1. Okay, so it takes, it takes two units to complete a full oscillation. Um, so we do begin at, we do begin at negative 1. Um, so this means, uh, sorry, we begin at positive 1. So this means that half the cycle will, will be completed at 1. So it goes like this. And then it goes back up and finishes it at 2. Uh, and let's draw the same thing over here. So it'll go like this and then come back at negative 2. Yeah, and then negative 2. Okay, so this is our y is equal to cosine of pi x. So now let's draw our second function. Um, y is equal to 4x squared minus 1. So this is a, just a parabola, but it's a steeper parabola that, whose vertex has been shifted downwards by 1. So the vertex is here. The vertex is here. And then let's just plot, um, let's just plot two points. So let's consider when x is equal to 1 and negative 1. So 4 times um, 1 squared minus 1, this is equal to 3. So uh, maybe I should have shifted this down. So when x is equal to 1, our function will be like way up here. And since it is symmetric, it'll look the same. Um, so it should look something like, like this. And as always, I always encourage you guys to review your graphic transformations if you're having trouble drawing these. Um, so we can see here that the area between them is this section over here. Um, and so to set up the integral, we do need to find the bounds. So the bounds is where they intersect. So this point over here and this point over here, which is actually terrible that I've drawn them because they should be the same height since they are symmetric. Um, so let's set these equations equal to each other just so that we can, let's see, for x squared minus 1, just so that we can um, find where they intersect. So we have 4x squared minus 1 is equal to cosine, um, cosine pine of x. So this is kind of hard to analytically solve for. So maybe we, what we could do is we could consider um, that they probably do intersect at this, like graphically speaking, it should be at a half and negative one half, right? So even if you don't draw it perfectly, um, looking at it can kind of give you the intuition on which points you should test. Um, in other cases, when you can factor it, you should solve it analytically. But in this case, we kind of look at it and we say, okay, maybe it's one half. So let's test it out. So if x is equal to one half, um, plus or minus one half, so we do have four times uh, one half squared minus one is equal to cosine of pi times one half. 
Um, so one half squared is equal to one quarter times four, so that is four times one over four minus one is equal to cosine of pi over two is zero, right? So let's see if this checks. Four times one quarter is just one. One minus one is equal to zero. Zero is equal to zero. It checks out. Um, so we do see that one of the points is one half, and because both the cosine and um, and this other function over here, they are even functions, it will give you the same thing if you plug in negative one half. Okay, so we do know that the integral, the bounds are from negative one half to positive one half. Um, and these two, we do see that, you know, in theory, if we had drawn this correctly, they are symmetric, right? The left hand side is has the same area as the right hand side. And the reason that we know it is symmetric, because both the cosine is symmetric with respect um, to the y axis. And the the parabola is also symmetric with with respect to the y-axis. The, the line at um, x equals zero is an axis of symmetry for both. So to make our lives a little bit easier, we're just going to express this as two times the integral from zero to one half, um, because we're just doubling the area from zero to one half. And then we just have to do the upper curve minus the lower curve. So the upper curve is cosine of pi x, minus the lower curve, which is minus um, 4x squared minus 1, and then all of this times dx. So let us integrate this. Um, this is the, it's 2 times, the integral of cosine x is sine of pi x over pi, um, and if this confuses you, just think that the opposite, the integral is the opposite of taking the derivative. So when you would uh, take the derivative of, say, sine of pi x, you would multiply pi times sine of pi x. So in this case, we're just um, dividing it. So, so we have sine of pi x over pi. And then this is minus 4x squared. So it's minus 4x cubed over 3. And then minus and minus 1 becomes plus. So plus x, so all of this times 2, and all of this evaluated from 0 to 1 half. Um, so let us plug in the upper boundary and the lower boundary. So this is 2 times sine of uh, pi over 2 is equal to 1. So this is just 1 over pi, and then minus 4 over 3 times uh, 1 half cubed, and then plus one-half. Um, if we were to plug in the lower boundary zero, we would just get zero for all terms, because sine of zero is zero, um, zero cubed is zero, plus zero is just zero. So we're not even going to plug that in. Um, and now this is equal to two over pi. Let's just distribute the two, and then minus uh, two times four minus eight over three, and then uh, one half cubed is one over eight, and then plus two times one half, so it's just plus one. Um, and then let's just clean it up. So this is two over pi, um, eight over three times one over eight, these cancel out. So that is just minus one third plus one, so plus two thirds. Uh, and maybe to make this super clear, I'm just gonna put here that I've um, multiplied this out. So this is our final answer. Let me just zoom out so you guys can see um, the full picture. This is our final answer, and we just found that by drawing our curves, um, setting these equations equal to each other so we could find the bounds of integration, and then integrating the upper function minus the lower function.